Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So, there is an upcoming developer Q&A which is happening on the 6th of June and according to Ian Hazacostas, who is the lead designer of World of Warcraft, or at least one of them, they are looking to tackle the tough questions. I've submitted a bunch already and I'm going to go through my thoughts and the questions that I personally have submitted here. Um, first though, it is a great opportunity for everyone to chime in. Even if your question isn't asked, it probably will be parsed through, so at least someone will see it. And I've linked a forum post down in the description of this video, which will detail how you can submit questions. If you've got a Twitter account, then honestly, the easiest way to do it is just to tweet it with the hashtag WarlordsQA. And while you're at it, follow me, because reasons and things. Let's go on to the actual questions. So, number one, what are your thoughts on alternate legendary items in Warlords of Draenor? And I suppose it's pretty easy to see where this question is coming from. I think legendary items are really cool, but they just don't feel that legendary in the current system. I love the idea of them being super rare items that only a handful of players on any given server have, and you know, maybe you've got one person in your guild who's that badass with the special legendary that really works well for their class. The legendary quest stuff just doesn't do uh, just doesn't do it for me at all, really. While the lore moments and the voice acting are really nice, I think that the gameplay behind all the time gating stuff really sucks. If Blizzard are really insistent on having these items being in the game, perhaps they could make new sort of more traditional legendary quality items. Uh, well, not legendary. They could make them artifact, which is a quality above legendary that I don't think much uh, or many things use. I think actually, no, maybe heirlooms use it, but you get my point, something above legendary. Um, I think it's a bit messy though, in terms of there being loads of different item qualities, but at least something to make them distinct and special. And um, though failing all that, I would just really like some more traditional legendaries that we get by just being in a raid, doing cool stuff in the vein of ones that have happened in past expansions before Mists of Pandaria. Next, my second question is, would you consider a winged dungeon model like what was seen in the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King? And the reason behind this question is again quite simple. As time went on, we've had fewer and fewer dungeons per expansion, and really less winged dungeons. A large part of the reason why Blizzard has said that they have, um, you know, the amount of dungeons they do, I think, is because of, you know, the art team resources and stuff like that. But back in TBC and Wrath, we had loads of dungeons, though probably just as many unique tile sets as we have today. By having winged dungeons, they're able to basically reuse those art assets to make more dungeons. Now, of course, there is a trade-off here, but I think having two or three dungeons share the same tile set is quite good, as long as that is a strong tile set with, you know, that's, that's in a place that's got pretty good lore behind it. Um, that number seems to be the sweet spot between repetitive visuals and a good amount of content. Another benefit of this design is they can really make the place feel large. Moving from having, like, you know, Utgard, uh, whatever, to Utgard Pinnacle was really cool. And uh, the same goes from uh, for, like, Ulduar, Ice Crown, Agile Narub, Hellfire Citadel, and the Nexus. By those places having loads of wings, well, they felt really big. Um, and right now, every dungeon is sort of not massive, and there's just one dungeon. And with patch 6.2 adding mythic dungeons, it would seem like putting a higher investment in dungeon quality is something that would actually pay off in the long run. And my next question is also dungeon related. So at number three, would you consider a higher difficulty level Time Walker dungeon type for the mid expansion dungeons, such as the ICC trio? This is a pretty self-explanatory one. In Wrath, the patch dungeons, or at least the ICC ones, were a pretty decent hike up in difficulty, and even in Cataclysm, the troll dungeons were decently tricky. I'm not sure about the Dragon Soul ones. I've got great memories of the ICC trio especially, and I can tell you for a fact, they're kind of what taught me how to, at the time, tank at a level that wasn't completely terrible. Um, for a time anyway, I am out of the loop now when it comes to tanking. I think that this would be pretty fun though, and unlike some of the older dungeons, the bosses in many of these sort of patch edition dungeons actually have enough mechanics to warrant a nice sort of, at least numbers wise, hard dungeon. Now I don't mean super hard, but you know, hard enough for them to actually matter, a slight level above the current level of Time Walker dungeons. I'll admit though, this one is a bit of a long shot. Anyway, at number four, with Warlords of Draenor lasting beyond patch 6.2, 
do you think we will see any new dungeon content, especially with Mythic? I'm just kind of getting the dungeon questions out of the way first. And again, this is a pretty simple point. And when a Polygon writer asked about uh, content beyond patch 6.2, Ian said that they had more story to tell or something to the, uh, that effect. Now, unfortunately, Polygon broke the interview down into a sort of heavily edited list article, so we don't know 100% what's actually going on, but the Polygon person did say there will be more patches, and articles like that, like, I can tell you for a fact, you know, they're pre-approved and they kind of pass through company PR. At the very least, all of the talking points are known beforehand. You do an article like that with a place like Polygon because you want to get a message out. So if the Polygon person's saying there's stuff beyond 6.2, I think that's pretty good reason to believe, but I'm pretty sure we'll find out about that anyway at, uh, at this Q&A. But getting back on point, um, with Blizzard suggesting that there is a new patch, it pretty much means there could be another six months of time spent on Draenor, and I think that some new dungeon content would be great. I don't think the same eight dungeons will actually last for a year and a half. If they were going to go with the Farallon slash Naru theme, then you could quite literally have Tempest Keep as the raid of a patch, and then have the other structures as dungeons. Now next, at number 5, uh, are you considering a redo of the Boar and Talbuk animations to make them a bit more natural? I've already li uh, written a video about the Warlords of Draenor mounts, but it probably won't be out before this Q&A, so I'm just going to cover this point here. Basically, I think that many of the animations are either terribly paced, very stiff, or just are for a different model and they do not fit. Since Warlords of Draenor has so many sort of reskins of the same like base model, I think it would be worth the animation time to fix up these base animations because one set of fixes will affect so many different mounts. And there is precedent for them doing that because in Warlords of Draenor patches, they've tweaked the character models. I know character models are more important than mount models, but when like when you've got 14 feckin' boars, you better make sure the boars actually don't run like they're... I don't know, bizarre we stumpy things on crack, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Ah, anyway, moving on to question the sixth. What are your thoughts on opening up flying once the main world of an expansion isn't current content? And I've talked about this already, I'm not going to talk much about it again, but if you want to hear another perspective on flying that's pretty in line with what I think, then I'd say that Preach's take on the topic is definitely worth a listen. And at number 7, do you think the scenario system of Mists of Pandaria could be merged with the mission system, specifically going on rare missions with followers? And I think these systems basically would just work really well together. Followers are a real bore to me, and uh, getting to do stuff with them, I think, would be pretty fun. More importantly, rare missions are generally the ones with good rewards, and getting those rewards via overcoming some sort of challenge would be a better system as far as I'm concerned than just clicking a button and waiting a few hours because there's no actual gameplay with your character there. For an example, imagine actually going into uh, Blingatron's secret vault and raiding it similar to the Isle of Thunder treasure trove scenario. So yeah, please, Blizzard, just try to make that system more fun and maybe if you do something similar in the future, just put scenarios in or put some sort of gameplay in. Now, next, question number eight is, are there plans to incentivize PvP in Tanan Jungle? Is the team happy with how it went on the Timeless Isle? I don't have much of a personal stake in this because I'm in a PvE server and I don't really mind that much, but from what I gather, a lot of people actually enjoyed the world PvP that occurred on the Timeless Isle. Right now, it doesn't look like there are any mechanics that are similar to that in Tanan Jungle, and I think adding a few objectives or some sort of simple reward system might get a bit of world PvP going on, and I know that people are really tired of Ashran. Um, now, I haven't actually asked Blizzard this, but also it's probably worth, if one of you could ask this maybe instead, um, what's up with the amount of battlegrounds and arenas? Can we maybe have a few more of those? What are, the, what are their thoughts on that? I'd, I'd kind of like to know because... It's been like two years since we've had any of that content. Next, at number nine, do you intend to add more difficult gameplay outside of grouped content? The world doesn't always feel that savage. Another simple question. I would like it if there was more content in the game that actually challenges us on an individual level outside of group content. I really like what they did with the legendary uh, solo like challenges from the legendary quest, like the, the temples and Kairos and all that stuff, so more things like that would be great. Um, the garrison campaign has been really easy so far, and even on characters with decently moderate gear. 
After killing Izuka Blade Fury or whatever she was called, I felt nothing at all. She didn't feel like a villain, even though she was supposed to be the overarching villain of the damn campaign. She never threatened me in combat that much. I mean, she threatened to kill me, but that doesn't matter if any time I run into her and when I finally fight her, she's an absolute cakewalk. Um, so that's a pity, and I really loved what they did with the Brawler's Guild. I thought that was great, so applying just some of the lessons they learned from the Brawler's Guild into the actual, like, world content of Draenor, I think would be a really good thing, and maybe it would make Draenor feel savage, because despite all of their marketing saying, oh, the savage world of Draenor, it's so savage, look at these savage beasts, look at that reaver, it's savage. It's not really felt savage, has it? No, it's been really easy to kill everything. So come on, give us a bit of sh savageness. That's not even a word. Savageness. I'm not Sean Connery. Anyway, let's finish off with the last, uh, the last question, the tenth one, which is: Do you have any further information about the planned transmog revamp? Now, this feature was supposed to be a part of patch 6.1, but it seems like it's just sort of slipped back quite a bit. You see, Warlords of Draenor made it so that armor changes its stats based on your spec. And that means that having a spec-based transmog is far harder now, because if you had two separate armor sets for your two different specs, that's fine, you could just transmog them both differently. But now, for an example, you're using the same shoulders for both of your specs, so... Um, well, you can't really swap those transmogs out that well, can you, without having to go back to a vendor, so... I really think with the Warlords changes, we've got to get this transmog system in soon, and perhaps it would get people a bit more excited to go out and do some transmog content. Anyway, so that's basically it. There are all the questions that I've asked Blizzard so far. Of course, it's still a few days, so I'm sure I'll ask more. Do ask your questions that you might have. Um, even just showing your, your voice and uh, being seen to engage in it is a good thing. And those tweets will be parsed through because they'll probably just download every tweet from the hashtag and then select the questions that they feel would go down the best. But even if they don't like your question, well, it's going to be read and it's going to be seen and maybe a developer will see it. May probably not. Let's be realistic. Probably not. But damn it, it's, it's, it's the only thing we can do at the minute. So we may as well try to give it a go. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. And I will see you next time.